Hi guys, this is Kushbu. Welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. In this video, we will see the question global and local inversions. We have some permutation of A that consists of numbers 0 to n minus 1, where n is the length of A. Number of global inversions is number of i's less than j, wherein 0 is less than i less than j, which is less than n. And for that, my a of i should be greater than a of j, that is in the descending order. Now, the number of local inversions is the number of i's wherein my a of i is greater than a of i plus 1. So, this is locally comparing a of i with just its next value. But in global, you can have comparisons with any value that satisfies i less than j condition and wherein this a of i is greater than a of j. We need to return true if and only if the number of global inversions is equal to the number of local inversions. For the example 1, the output is true whereas for example 2, the output is false. Now how we are getting this output we will see with the help of an example so don't worry as this might sound a little bit tricky to you while reading out but when you visualize this, this would become very simpler. So let's go and see how we can solve this question with an example. Let's first take this particular example and as per the definition given to us for the global inversion, it means that these are the number of inversions with a of i greater than a of j where i is less than j. So if you consider 3, you can have 3 inversions. These are global inversions because 3 is greater than 2. 3 is even greater than 1 and 3 is even greater than 0. These are the indexes and these are the numbers. Now if you consider 2, you will get 2 inversions for that. These are also global inversions. And if you take 1, you will get 1 global inversions. So in total, you will have 6 global inversions for this particular example. Now let's go ahead and see what is local inversions. So local inversion would be just for your local pairs that is for i and i plus 1 pair. So over here your local inversions are the ones marked with this white because 3 is greater than 2 then this 2 is greater than 1 and this 1 is also greater than 0. So these are my local inversions which are 3. So if you see over here my local inversions are 3 but my global inversions are 6 which is not the case that I want and so the answer for this particular example would have been false. So now what are the things that we can find out by using the properties. The hint given in the question says that find out where you can place 0. So this would help us solve the question further. So now let's see. If we take a ascending order number that is 0, 1, 2, 3, we can say that there are no inversions because we don't get a place wherein my a of i is greater than a of j. In the second case, if I just swap these numbers against themselves then I will get two local inversions and two global inversions because one is greater than zero and three is greater than two. Neither this one is greater than any of these others and neither is this three greater than any of the other because there is nothing left. So over here also we can say that the local and global inversions are equal so the answer is true. So you can have these three cases wherein you have an ascending order, no inversions, wherein you can have a swap of these numbers and you can have equal number of local and global inversions or you can have a mix of both. So let's find out where my zero can be placed. My zero can either be placed at the zeroth index or first index. If it is placed any further, I'll get more number of global inversions than my local inversions as we have seen in this particular example. So I can say 0 can only be there at 0th or 1st position as you can see in all these three examples which would yield true. Now what about the other numbers? Other numbers can be either placed at the ith position that is for ascending order wherein you will have no inversions or in the swap case it can be at i minus 1 for example so this 1 is at i minus 1 that is 0th index and i plus 1 that is this 0 comes to the first index so it is i plus 1 so that's the trick over here i can only have the elements or the numbers at i i minus 1 or i plus 1 index 
and so this can also be stated as the absolute difference between any index and the number would be always less than 1 that is either 0 or plus 1 and minus 1 which gives us 1 when we find its absolute value. So that's all for this question. So let's go ahead and code it out. So over here we'll iterate over all the numbers and we need the absolute difference between the index and the number and it should not go beyond 1. If it goes beyond 1, we can return false. Otherwise, finally, we can just return true. So, let's try to run this code. And it's giving a perfect result. Let's submit this. And it got submitted. The time complexity for this particular approach would be O of n as we are going to go through all the elements in my A. So, that's it for today, guys. I hope you like the video and I'll see you in another one. So, till then, keep learning, keep coding.